In this video I'm gonna take you to Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. We spent there two days and it was very enjoyable. We went to Slovakia for 10 days to attend our friend's wedding in a mountain town Liptovsky Mikulash. There is another vlog about this place and its beautiful surroundings. Bratislava was the first city I visited since July when we spent a few days in London before going to Robin Hood's Bay in Yorkshire. For me, as a city lover who lives in a tiny village now, it's a big deal. And in general, I love to explore new places. I wasn't planning to visit particular places before we actually turned up there. Traveling with a toddler, you have to go with the flow and leave planning. We have to do it around her sleeping time and so on. We rented an apartment 10 minutes walk from the old town. Oh, I forgot to take a room tour, sorry. I usually do it, but this time I totally forgot about it. But when traveling with the family, I prefer to go for apartments rather than hotels, because it saves you time and energy, and we can easily come back for Naomi's sleep and continue our walks later without losing time on going to a remote apartment somewhere not in the city center. So what does Bratislava feel like? I like this uh, old town a lot. It's classical architecture and numerous bustling little restaurants. It reminded me of Ukrainian Lviv a bit. No wonder as Bratislava also was a part of Austro-Hungarian Empire, just like Lviv was. Bratislava has a rich history. It was the coronation site and legislative center and capital of the Kingdom of Hungary in the 16th century, from 16th to the 17th to be precise. It was here that 11 Hungarian kings and 8 queens were crowned in a quite modest-looking St. Martin's Cathedral. This cathedral's peak is 85 meters high and dominates Old Town skyline. In the past it was a part of the tower's defensive wall as it was built into it. The town is located at both banks of the Danube River and it is the only national capital that borders two states, Austria and Hungary. Vienna is only 80 kilometers away and Budapest is 200 kilometers away. By car it's like two hours. Pretty close, huh? Bratislava Castle is the most famous city's landmark, located on a hill not far from the church. A stone castle wasn't constructed until the 10th century, when the area was part of the Kingdom of Hungary, and before there were Celtic and Roman fortifications. Now it's a museum, of course. But we didn't go inside. Something to do the next time we are here. Next to the Bratislava castle there is a big observation point and a park. This view reminds me of Kiev a lot, as Kiev is also very green and located on both banks of the Dnipro river. Everybody goes in there, it's an old town arch, arc, sorry, it's an old town arc. I was attracted by Ukrainian language on this window screen, it's, uh, this part is in Slovak and this here is in Ukrainian, usually the second language is English and you can meet Russian language as well a lot, but Ukrainian not really, and I'm pleasantly surprised. It says that it's a 
a little back from the bomb shelter when Bratislava was being bombed during the Second World War. Uh, some student took this a little uh, bag and uh, kept his documents and money in it. Because they let you go into the bomb shelter only with such a little bag in case something happens to you so that they will know who you are. This statue of a woman with a jug symbolizes her readiness to protect the city from fires. Like most medieval fountains, it was used as a firefighting water tank. This is a famous bronze statue called Man at Work. The man's name is Chumil, which means watcher, and uh, it was created by Slovak sculptor Viktor Hulik. A funny story that Chumil lost his head a couple of times to traffic, so they placed a man at work sign over this statue. I read that Nidbalka Gallery is one of the most interesting ones in the city, as it displays the works of the most prominent Slovak artists from the late 19th century up to the present. So we went there. And it turned out to be true. The name derives from the one of the oldest streets in, it's located on, Nedbalova, Nedbalova 17 to be precise. Museums and even art galleries can be boring sometimes, but this one is like 100% interesting for me. I find uh, the works exhibited here really, really good. If you are a true lo art lover or if you're just interested in art, you should visit definitely. They have a permanent exhibition which uh, consists of 160 works on display, I guess, and uh, temporary exhibitions as well. The gallery is located in a unique spiral shaped building on five floors. Check out this lift. Uh, on each floor there is a lift that is painted after some prominent work. So I especially like this one. Thank you. 
didn't see them yet. I didn't see them yet. I couldn't guess uh, Naomi's favorite work, but Pete showed me this one. It was this one. It's called Outcast, uh, an artwork by Zoltan Palugyay, and it's made in the expressionistic style. Expressionism refers to art that prefers inner feelings to objective reality. And Naomi chose this one. I have no idea why. I realized that watching art on video and watching it in reality is totally different and it's not even one-tenth of the pleasure when you see it in real life but at least uh, this will give you a, a glimpse of what they, they show there in the bulk gallery and you can see that these works are really good. What do you think? What do you think? What? Parachute. Two little girls. Yeah, there's two little girls and a little boy. And what are they doing? I don't know. What do you think they're doing? In a net. <laughs> they've got, yeah, they've got funny necks, haven't they? So what else? What else can you see? Are there some little animals there? And, um, yeah. Yeah. What kind of animals are there? Parachute. What parachute? Huh? What else? Bird. There's a bird, yeah. You don't know. Mm. I had another art impression on the way back. I dropped into a gallery which recently held an auction of works by Ukrainian artists and 90% of them were sold out. And it was good to know because all the profit was to help Ukraine. Catalog of kids paintings, kids drawings. Closer to the evening there are more and more musicians on the streets of Bratislava. And of course we checked out local restaurants, not only Slovak. It's funny, but in Bratislava every second restaurant is a Vietnamese one. If you don't eat your food, you're gonna be hungry. Eat your... Oh, yours! Yum, yum! Finally got to eat some Slovak food in this restaurant I can recommend. Even though online the prices were a bit cheaper than it was in reality, they didn't renew the menu, but it was worth it. It was very yummy. Tell you what, you sit on your seat. I'll put it in. I'll put it in your I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share uh, with me your thoughts in the comments. I'll be really grateful. Click like and subscribe if you didn't yet. And see you in my next video. I have another great spot in Bratislava to share with you.